Well hello, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter. Here we've got a load of boxes with filters in. I can't remember what sort of filters they are, who the filters were from. Okay, so I will get to all of those filters sooner or later. I've currently got about 35 videos shot, which still need to be edited. So this series is going to go on for quite a while. Um, forgive me if I look a little bit drained today. I have just paid a tax bill, which was horrendous. So if anybody's self-employed, they'll know exactly how I feel. Especially if they're self-employed in this country. And we've got this new tax scam whereby you pay your tax for the previous year plus you pay your tax for the coming year as well at the same rate. I mean, that's just... I think we should get into taking a look at a filter. Which I have lost. What the hell did I do with that filter? Oh, man. Oh, there we are. Wait. Right. Oh, okay, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at an, another internal filter. This one is from Interpet and it's called a CF3. CF, as far as I know, stands for cartridge filter. Because like a lot of many other internal filters, it relies on a series of cartridges, which I'll show you in a moment. This one is the biggest one in this range. I'm sure there's a CF1, a CF2 and this one, the CF3. Now these have been out for a good few years. I remember having these in the shop and that must be about 10 years ago. We'll bring the camera in for a closer look in here. I'll tell you what the various cartridges are and what they do or what they're meant to do. But first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to Colin who sent me this. This is actually in an unused state as well. So it doesn't smell of anything. Some of the other ones that I've received and have still yet to film are absolutely humming. So it's nice to start with a nice clean filter. Okay, before I take these cartridges out, I'll just show you a little bit of detail on the back. You get this little Lego sort of hook attachment thing, which just presses onto two raised nodules there. And that allows this suckered part, which would stick on the side of your aquarium, to slide up like that. That allows you to be able to take the filter off, carry it away, and leave this stuck to the side of the aquarium. Water is drawn in through the bottom, and really, to be honest with you, that is an excellent draw area. Look at that. You know, you're not going to have one particular part where it's going to be sucking all the water in. That's a nice, that's just nice quality, and it's nicely diffused intake. I always like to see that. In fact, that's pretty similar to like a pond pump or something. Look at that. Don't often see that on internal filters. And there's our pump in the bottom. This bottom part just comes off. Then you can get into the pump, clean the impeller and so on and such forth. I suppose really you could put some sort of media in here, but there's no real need. So the water is drawn in the bottom. It's then kind of spat out towards the back of the inside of this container. And then it rises up and it comes through one, two, three cartridges before pouring back out into your tank. So in that respect, it's pretty similar to a hang on the back filter, except this one is mounted internally. So the first cartridge that it goes through is this one. The top of it has got nothing in. The bottom of it has got some tiny little ceramic rings which I actually like the look of. I mean, they won't do much as far as supporting bacteria goes, but as a primary settlement, those tiny little rings are quite nice. Why they only fill half of this is anybody's guess. So that's the first one. Second one is a one that a lot of people will be familiar with. It's a fine pad, which is kind of stitched onto the cartridge. And then inside there, we've got some carbon. You get those on a lot of internal filters and also a lot of hang on the backs as well. And then the last cartridge it goes through is what is called an algae reduction pad. Um, yeah, man. 
you know, I mean, these are just things really just to keep you buying cartridges. Obviously, you won't need to buy replacement media cartridges, but this fine pad, you're going to need to replace that. You're going to need to replace the algae pad. Um, there is a better way of setting this thing up. So we'll put those all to one side and I'll show you what else you can do with this particular container. Hopefully you'll be able to see that little raised bit right in the bottom of this filter. That's where the pump spits the water out and it spits it towards the back. And then it goes through all the cartridges to the front and back to the tank. So basically in here, we need some mechanical filtration. There's a coarse pad. That's our first stage of mechanical filtration. So that drops in there. Like so. On top of that, we're gonna put a medium density pad. Like that. And really, that'll catch the vast majority of the particulate matter that gets drawn into here. You could go with a fine pad on top of there if you wanted. You know, if you had a problem with cloudy water, stick a fine pad on top of there. I'm not going to because generally you don't have to. So we've got coarse and then medium. And the medium will catch a hell of a lot of the fine muck as well. On top of that, I've got a mesh bag which is filled with 800 grams or 1.75 pounds uh, or one and three quarter pounds of bio gravel. And that's our extremely porous gravel. Basically made from the same stuff as the bio home, so it's gonna support aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. That simply drops in there. Flatten it down and we've got a little bit of space above it because I didn't fill that bag all the way. And on top of that, I'm gonna put a carbon impregnated pad, like so. That comes to just below the level of this lip. So now water comes into the pump, it goes through coarse and then a medium foam, and then it goes through all the media and exits out through a carbon pad. So we've got mechanical, biological, chemical filtration. All three, obviously, if you don't want or you don't need the carbon, don't bother putting that in. Just fill a little bit more media. You can get nearly a kilo in there, which is 2.2 pounds, if you don't use that pad. So that holds a canny old bit of media. So there you go. That is a really simple way to set this up. As I said, it functions very much like a hang on the back filter in that the water would generally travel up and then out. So it's set up as such. It's a really easy way to set something up. And you don't have to do that, obviously, if you don't mind constantly buying these replacement cartridges, just use that. But this will give you a hell of a lot more filtering capacity doing it this way. Also, you don't have to use the bio gravel. I'm using it because that's a sort of media that I sell and I know that it can give you the full cycle, which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and very low, possibly zero nitrates, because of its ability to support aerobic and anaerobic bacteria, unlike many other types of filter media. Okay, I'll just give you a few facts and figures for the size of tank and stock, based on what the manufacturer says this thing would be suitable for, and also with those changes, what I say it would be suitable for. So, manufacturer says it's suitable for between 90 and 160 litres, which is 20 to 35 US gallons. Like everybody else, they don't say whether that's for half a cycle or a full cycle. I can almost guarantee the way it was set up will never ever give you a full cycle. You've got to use suitable media and properly size the filter to get a full cycle. Now we're going to talk some figures that are based in reality, based on the amount of media that we've got in here. So we've got 800 grams of bio gravel, or one and three quarter pounds. So now if you're looking to achieve a full cycle, that makes this suitable for a normally stocked tank of around 80 litres, which is 21 US gallons. Or if the tank is heavily stocked, it would make it suitable for nearer 40 litres, or 10.5 US gallons. 
Remember, that's to see a full cycle. If you're not bothered about that, if you're just happy with it doing half a job, you don't even need to change it because ammonia and nitrite are pretty easy to keep at zero. So, you know, as long as the stock didn't go too mad, you could you could easily keep the ammonia and nitrite down. It's that nitrate that is the hard one to budge because that one relies on the anaerobic bacteria, which in turn relies on having a suitably large environment, i.e. a certain amount of media, to support it. So there you go. That was a very easy way to improve the capacity and the function of this filter. However, there is a downside to putting a lot of media into an internal filter that sticks on the side. And that is, in the words of Colin, um, you made a great job of my Aqua One Maxi 103F internal filter. It's a lot better. I have put a pebble at the bottom for the filter to rest on. It's that heavy. It slides to the bottom of the tank on its suckers. So this one may do the same. So yeah, it can cause these just to slide down if you put too much in. And that's why Colin sits it on top of a stone, just to stop it sliding down and to keep it up off the bottom. So there's a good tip. This one, with it having this little hook on the back, will probably just hang on the back without the need for those suckers. So I think that problem of it sliding down the glass can be alleviated. Just give you a close up of that. There you go. And you can just take that off and adjust it based on the height of your tank and the height of your water level. So if you press that on there, you should now be able to hang that on your tank. And now, because that is above the level of your outlet, you should just be able to hang that on the inside of your tank without the need for the suckers. And that is a really good design because I don't often see that. That gives you that option of just doing away with the suckers altogether. And I like that. There you go. So that's pretty much just like a hang on the back filter that hangs inside your tank instead of on the outside. Now I'm not sure whether these are available outside of Europe, but I will put links in the video description and in the pinned comment. If it's a US only site, I'll put US in brackets, or if it's a worldwide link, I'll just put like Amazon or eBay in brackets. Hopefully it will be available worldwide because that's a pretty good solution if you're looking for an internal filter and you don't want to hang something outside the tank, you can hang this one inside the tank. So I think in that respect it makes it almost unique because most of them do rely on the suckers and that means that the filter has got to be pretty light to stay there. So if anybody out there has got experience of using one of these filters, either currently or in the past, please, if you want to report about it, put that in the comment section. That's what that comment section is there for. It's just basically for people to share their ideas, share their experiences and help others. As always, I just want to finish by saying thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, I'll just get this thing put together and then I'll bring the camera in. We'll take these cartridges out. I'll explain what they do or what they're meant to do. And then I'll show you a really simple way to set this up to be...